we grew up a little too fast I miss the days that we chill and relax Where did the time go? It all passed Now I need to go back I had no worries but What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So, as you guys can tell from the title, in today's video, I'm gonna be removing the injectors from my E46 as well as showing you guys a quick DIY way that's also super cheap on how to clean them. So basically right now, I have the car sitting for winter, as you guys can tell, it's like super cold in here. And um, basically every time I cold start the car and even when I'm driving it around, the car just has like a consistent vibration that you feel through the cabin and the steering wheel. And I did a bunch of diagnosing, I checked a bunch of things on the car and I think it is the injectors. I was also getting a lean code in bank one and only bank one, not even bank two. So that to me tells me that there's something happening in the first bank. So either injector one, two, and three, which is failing to provide enough fuel, which is causing like a difference in air to fuel ratio, which I believe is what's causing the issue. So with all that being said, let's head on straight into the video. So before you go ahead and start removing everything, first thing you wanna do is go ahead and remove that negative battery terminal. So you have no issues. So after you move the bolts, you kinda just wanna move it out the way. So it doesn't have any chance of coming back and touching the terminal. And then now let's go back to the front. So next, you just wanna remove this cabin air filter. So I'll twist those tabs. Well, mine are a bit weird, but yeah, should just pop out. Just like that. Remove the filter. There's also a couple tabs over here that you wanna remove so you can take these cables out the way. So just like that, I'm basically just grabbing a flathead and then doing that, this pops out the cables down so they're nice and out the way so after that next thing you want to do is grab your torx 30 and undo these four bolts right there of course my car is missing one but there should be four there and then after you undo those this whole thing should just pop out so after you have that shield out next thing you want to do is remove that positive terminal which is held on by a 19 millimeter bolt so after you take it out i'm just going to move it out the way so it doesn't interfere with anything and then i just screwed on the bolt that was on it just so i don't lose it and then now if you guys have an engine cover which most of you probably do you just want to remove the engine covers so it's basically two little covers that you're gonna have to pop off a little flathead and then there's a 10 millimeter bolt under each little spot that you pop off. Same with this side as well. So after that, what you wanna do is pop out your O2 sensor cables. So this one just pops out like this. And then you guys should also have another one here, but mine's deleted, so I don't have one. And then you also wanna pop out these cables so they just kind of pull out upright. I don't have to do this with one hand. But yeah, that's up. Kind of want to get those out the way so you can see the fuel rail nicely so this is going to be the fuel rail and then the fuel injectors sit underneath right there so after that you want to remove that connector which is just like a push-in style you could remove this pcv valve if you wanted to but i'm not going to bother just because they tend to be a bit brittle but if you did want to remove this push it from the top and the bottom, and it just pulls out. So after that, you wanna remove this cap off this valve, so you can release some fuel pressure. You should expect some fuel to like squirt out at you, so just put a cover in it, on top, over it, and yeah, that should be enough. Got some fuel on it. Yeah. And then make sure you just put the cap back on. After you do that, you're gonna remove these two clips. So I'm just gonna grab my handy dandy tool right here and kind of push them in and push out. You could also just use your hands really if you wanted to. Let me see if they just pull out like that. Same thing with that one. So after you guys do that, you're gonna wanna start taking out this electronic rail that basically connects to every single fuel injector. So you're gonna wanna release the hooks or the clips that connect to the fuel injectors. So you have to push them towards the outside. So you definitely wanna grab some sort of flathead or something small so you can stick in there and basically push them towards the outside. And then you also wanna do this for each one, all six. So basically, kind of just like, I wanna push it towards the outside. It is kind of annoying dealing with this, but yeah, just like that. So after you do that, you can get a flathead and kind of just stick it with the rail or you can just use your hands, but basically I just pulled up on it like this and it just popped out. And then you just wanna pull the whole thing out and you do want to be careful you don't drop the clips and lose them anywhere so just make sure you don't do that so after you move that you just kind of want to like push it out the way so it doesn't interfere with anything and then there's going to be four 10 millimeter bolts that you want to remove as well that are connected to the fuel rail those four right there so basically after you guys have those four bolts out you're going to want to stick a bunch of rags underneath the fuel rail because as soon as you pull up at it you're probably gonna have a bit of fuel dumping out of each uh, port for the fuel injectors and i already emptied the fuel in mine so i don't have to worry about that 
sense, but there should be a bit of a uh, fuel coming out of every port. So you just want to make sure you take care of that. I'm just trying to make sure it doesn't go anywhere hot or catch fire. You also want to make sure you're in a well ventilated area if a lot of fuel does end up coming out. So after that, I kind of just got the fuel rail, push it out the way, and as you guys can see, all six injectors are in a nice neat line right there. I'm gonna pull them out. They should just pop out, I believe. So basically I just twist and turn it a little, and then they just pop out. Take a bit of pressure, but they pop out fairly easily. So now I have all six injectors right in front of me. Also went ahead and took off the O-rings that sit on the top portion of it. And then basically to get this cleaning done, what you're gonna need is a hot glue gun, hopefully with a bit of extra glue. You're also gonna need a tire stem or also a tire valve. I'm not really too sure exactly what these are called, but you're gonna have to pick up one of these. Plastic or metal cap doesn't really matter. And then basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna drill a hole in the top of it. And then we're gonna stick this tube that comes with the, the carburetor cleaner. And we're gonna glue it tight. So basically when we grab this, we're gonna stick it to the end. So it creates a nice seal and then we're gonna shoot the carb cleaner through it and simultaneously at the same time, we're gonna be providing power to the fuel injector. So it cleans out all the gunk. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to grab the tire stem or the tire valve, whatever this thing's called. And we're gonna be taking out that inner, I don't even know what that's called, but like the inner valve check thing. You just wanna stick the flathead in it and you wanna spin it. comes out just like that. So after that, you're gonna wanna drill a hole through the cap of the tire stem. So I went ahead and found just a plastic one since it'd be just be way quicker to drill through. So I'm just gonna drill a hole in this real quick. So after you drill the hole, I'm basically just gonna be sticking this through here like this. I'm just trying to make sure it's uh, fairly straight. And then I'm just gonna grab my hot glue. And just stick it around it. Hopefully that creates a good enough seal. Just let that sit for a little bit. So after that, I'm just gonna put this cap back on. Nice and tight. And then basically the idea is, this end of the valve can actually slip over the injector. And it does create a pretty good seal. It is fairly tight. Slightly difficult to get on, but should get on there. Yep, just like that. That's on there pretty good. It's really, honestly, not gonna leak. Should look like something like that. Basically, what you're gonna be doing, connecting this end to the cleaner, spraying this, and as you're spraying this, you're also gonna be giving this a 12 volt power. So basically, I moved this setup towards the car now. So as you see, that's how it looks. And then to power it, you're basically gonna need any sort of battery or any sort of a 12 volt source of power. I'm gonna be using my battery because that's basically all I have. So I basically took one for each end, connected one to the positive and one to the negative. And basically all I'm gonna be doing, as I spray this, I'm gonna be pressing this and just tapping it. I'm not gonna be holding it on, I'm just gonna be tapping it. And then you should see the fuel injectors shoot out the cleaner. So basically, 
You want to keep shooting the cleaner through the injector until you start to see it look like a fine mist. It shouldn't look like it's shooting like in a straight line or anything. It has to look like a nice fine mist. As well, you also notice in the video how I rotated the injector and shot it the other way as well. Because these injectors, they also have a little filter that sits right inside the entrance for the injector that also tends to clog up. So you also want to shoot it backwards so you could back flush everything as well. But basically, you just want to repeat that process for all six injectors until all of them are shooting like a nice fine mist. And then they should be nice and clean. And of course, when you're cleaning it backwards, don't expect it to shoot a mist backwards because that only works one way. But basically, you just want to see the fluid come out the back just so you know the cleaning and the back flush was also done. So other than that, I also would suggest that you guys go ahead and replace the O-rings that do come on the fuel injector. But mine do seem to be pretty well. And just waiting for them to ship here also takes a little bit of time and I'm a bit time restricted. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse the ones I have. Should be fine. They look perfectly fine. So I'm not worried about that. And if you guys wanna do an extra step, you could also remove the filters that sit inside the fuel injector at the entrance and just completely replace them. But I heard they're pretty hard to take out and they're pretty hard to find, so I didn't bother. I'm just gonna end up reusing the ones that were already in it. And that's why I also did the back flush because just to clean out the filters that sit inside. So again, should be fine with that as well. So other than that, that's the cleaning process done. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and put the fuel injectors back into the car and see if that fixed my problem. So I'm just gonna quickly go ahead, put the O-rings back into the injectors and throw them back into the car. And to reinstall the injectors, it's basically just the exact same process I just showed you guys, but in reverse. So now that I have everything back together, I didn't bother on putting on the engine cover because I'm gonna be working on the engine fairly soon again. So I just left that there. And then let's just go give this a start and see how much better she runs. so much better now. So I don't know if you guys could tell, but the idle was much better than it was before, especially on the cold start. I would definitely say the injector cleaning was a mission success. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you found it helpful. If you guys have any questions or comments, you just leave them down below and I'll be more than happy to answer. And if you guys want to see more of the E46, you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I'll leave it on the page right here somewhere. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!